Dear all, Namaste. In this video, I shall be discussing about Laryngomalacia, which is a most common congenital laryngeal anomaly. Exact cause of this condition is unknown, but it may be due to neurologic dysfunction of the larynx, where there is altered laryngeal tone by abnormal integration of the laryngeal nerves. This is most commonly accepted theory. Next is maldevelopment of laryngeal cartilaginous structures. This condition explains the etiology of laryngomalacia as it is more common in preterm babies. Another is gastroesophageal reflux disease which is also found to be associated with laryngomalacia. How does the baby present? It is not very commonly seen in newborn babies. Symptoms begin few weeks after birth which progresses over 9 to 12 months and most of the times results by 2 years. This clinical presentation is in accordance with maldevelopment of the cartilage structures. After 2 years, the cartilages become more stronger and the child stops having the symptoms. The most common symptom is inspiratory stridor. The stridor is increased in supine position, feeding, respiratory infection and exertion or crying. All these conditions lead to sucking in of the supraglottic structures. Therefore, the child gets inspiratory stridor. And that stridor is relieved in neck extension and prone position. In this case, the lax tissues will fall anteriorly. Therefore, there will be decreased stridor. In contrast to other animals, phonation and cry are normal. So we have to think of laryngomalacia when the child speaks normally and cries normally but has inspiratory stridor. Other problems like feeding difficulties, failure to thrive, dyspnea and sinuses are rare in comparison to other congenital laryngeal animals. The investigation of choice in laryngomalacia is flexible laryngoscopy. It shows elongated and longitudinally folded or omega sept epiglottis which falls posteriorly inferiorly on inspiration, that is the reason for inspiratory stridor. The arytenoids are redundant and bulky, which prolapse anteriorly and medially on inspiration. So when the arytenoids fall anteriorly, then the child will have stridor. AE fold becomes shortened and there will be medial prolapse of the AE fold. All these conditions leading to inspiratory stridor. During expiration, there will be force. So these lax structures move superiorly or there will be expulsion of these structures which leads to free flow of air. So there will be no respiratory distress in the child during expiration. This is true for all supraglottic causes of stridor. Most of the times only flexible laryngoscopy is enough for diagnosis but sometimes we require rigid bronchoscopy under general anesthesia to exclude other animals because more than one animal is present in 45% of the individuals or children. Therefore, we have to rule out other congenital animals of trachea and bronchus also. This picture shows omega sept epiglottis in flexible laryngoscopy. You can see here this is the omega sept epiglottis and this also shows omega sept epiglottis, tall tubular epiglottis along with certain A fold prominent arytenoids and medialized AE folds as well. You can see the larynx inlet is narrowed here. This is during inspiration where the supraglottic structures get sucked in and this is during expiration where there will be free flow of air as these structures move apart because they are lax structures and force of air propels them slightly laterally. How to treat laryngomalacia? As already told, the condition improves by around 2 years. Therefore, reassurance is the most important thing in treatment plan. When the child is made prone while sleeping, this condition relieves in around 99% of children, so it is not very difficult for management. When the child is having gastroesophageal reflux disease, then that has to be treated by suitable medicines. And surgical management is not usually required, but when the child is in distress, when the child does not improve with sleeping in prone position also, 
or when the child has failed to thrive, does not grow, then we have to do some surgical management. Emergency trigostomy or elective trigostomy can be performed when the child has respiratory distress or when the child does not improve with general measures. And trigostomy is kept for around 2 years of age because by 2 years the chitin structures become strong. Epiglutoplasty either by cautery or by laser assisted technique also relieves the symptoms. The epiglottis can be fixed anteriorly also for when there is medial collapse. Then we have to remove the waist of A folds and making the A fold slightly longer. Tubular epiglottis can be trimmed and made short. When there is medial collapse of corniculate or cuneiform cartilage, then they can be removed and redundant adenoid mucosa can be also trimmed. When the epiglottis is posteriorly displaced, we can do epiglottopexy. The epiglottis is fixed anteriorly. The AE folds can be divided when there are short AE folds. The basic aim of surgery in laryngomalacia is to make the supraglottic larynx more wider and more stronger to make it non-collapsible when the child breathes. Most of the time surgery is not required. You can see this is the pre-operative photograph where there is elongated or tall epiglottis and the arytenoids are very thick and swollen and short AE folds. After surgery, the arytenoids have been reduced in size and you can see the true vocal cords and there is adequate inspiratory area for the child. Please subscribe my channel for more educational videos. Thank you. Thank you so much.